Hey friends, Mike Adams here with Navajo Generating Station Remembered. Let's take a closer look at an aerial photo of the construction of NGS and see what we can glean from it. I've got an old black and white image open here before us. This is an aerial shot that was taken from the south end of Navajo Generating Station plant site, kind of toward the north end, a little bit of an angle. But it captures some really good stuff that I want to talk about in this. One of the things that I should mention at the outset is I was on site here at the plant probably shortly after this time frame when this video, where, when this picture was taken. Sometimes shortly after when this shot was, was taken, Unit 1 was a little further along. Unit 2 was, was well on its way. And construction may have begun on Unit 3 a little bit, but, you know, it's kind of all a blur, so I'm not really sure about that. But I know that I was on site shortly after this photo was taken, probably within a few months after this photo was taken. Not to bore you with details or anything, but let me bore you with a couple of details. When I was younger and I had my Volkswagen uh, bus, my 60-something Volkswagen bus, which I really love and I kick myself for not having it today, I, ha I picked up a, a part-time job with a company called Wyckoff Distributing. And I would go out twice a day to the plant and deliver material out to the plant. I would pick it up at the loading dock of Al Boss Distributors down there on Vista Avenue. And in my little Volkswagen van, my little four-banger four Volkswagen van, I'd go bopping out to the plant, and twice a day I would deliver material, material that would fit in my van, uh, to the plant site. And I would deliver it in this little building right here. It's kind of got a little dark uh, side to it facing the camera. I think that's the building that I delivered it to. It looks like it. There's a little tiny loading dock, and I would pull my van up, em empty stuff out, get a signature, and head back into town. Again, a little part-time job. Uh, it met the needs at the time, and it was kind of fun to go out there to the plant and watch what was going on, get a chance to see it close up. Later on, I became a security guard with Bertco. Bertco was the security company at NGS in those early years, and hey, the rumors are true, we were armed. I had a 357 sidearm that I wore while I was at work, and so did the other guards. Some of them, it was all our own weapons. We would bring our own weapons out there, and received training on that, and that was part of our garb. Uh, we were actually armed security guards, which is kind of spooky when you think about it. You know, here's a 19-year-old running around with a pistol and uh, a little bit of authority, and fortunately nothing happened. So, But anyway, I want to extract a couple of things from this picture for you just to kind of give it some context. You'll see that down here on the lower right end, you can see the road uh, coming into the plant site. That's the same road that's in use today. The difference is back then it was a dirt road. The uh, the guard, the main guard shack was probably just underneath this picture, just off the picture, underneath it a little bit along that road. I spent a lot of hours there in that little guard shack. Actually, it was a pretty big guard shack. And you remember uh, a video or two ago, I had a conversation with Bobby Poole. Remember that? Bobby worked for Owens Corning Fiberglass about this time, actually a little after this time, I guess, the same as, as me. Uh, a little later on, he worked for Owens Corning Fiberglass, and eventually the Owens Corning Fiberglass would be built right here in this area. And it was a big uh, tin building, metal building, couldn't miss it. And I remember seeing Bobby go to work and, you know, get out there and do his thing during the day and have a lot of memories of that. So... I was thankful that when I interviewed Bobby, we got to mention that connection there too with Owens Corning Fiberglass. That building's not there yet in this picture, but it's just a matter of time before it shows up. The uh, two long buildings that you see here are in the area of uh, the Unit 3 cooling towers, where the Unit 3 cooling towers would eventually be built. Those two long buildings are the barracks, and the little square building next to it was the Bertco Admin Building. Bertco ran the barracks, and Bertco ran the security, and Bertco ran the cafeteria, which is this building right here. A lot of good meals in that cafeteria. They made some really good steaks, the best I remember. If we look further out toward the end of the photo, you'll see here the uh, service water ponds under construction. You'll see the area cleared for Unit 1 cooling towers and Unit 2 cooling towers. You'll see Unit 1 boiler is under construction. You can see the power blocks under construction. The foundation's there for Unit 2, and it looks like the prep work's begun for Unit 3. This building off to the right, this large uh, square building, was the admin building for Bechtel. The Bechtel admin employees were housed in that building. I spent a lot of time in that building, walking through it with my sidearm, 
making sure everybody was safe, and I'm sure they were really glad to see me. Just over the hill there from the uh, barracks and the cafeteria, this area right in here would eventually become the parking area for the operations and maintenance personnel of the plant. It was that way for years and years. This is where we would park when we would go in to work our shift, and that parking lot would fill up because there were a lot of employees there. You can also see in this photo that the administration building wasn't there yet. It looks like maybe ground might be getting cleared for it, but it's not there yet in this photo. And so this is, this is very early 1970s, probably 71, somewhere in there. But it brings back some memories having been on site at that time and being physically present during some of, this, some of these events that were going on. After my uh, stint with Bertco as a security guard, I got hired by SRP in 1976 and thus started my career with SRP, which was a very good career, great company to work for, great company to be retired from. I'm just sad to see NGS go. It took a lot longer to build NGS than it did to demolish it. And of course, the demolition isn't done yet. We've seen the stacks go down. We've seen the precips go down. We've seen the boilers go down. Next is going to be the power block. As of this recording, the power block's still there. I'm hoping to get back on site to video that as well and to be able to talk about that some more. So I just wanted to bring this photo up, kind of geeked out over it when I saw it because of my connection to it, and I knew what some of these facilities were. I've been in some of these facilities and spent time there, and I just wanted to have a moment with you to talk about it. I won't take up any more of your time, but remember, you can find me online at NavajoGeneratingStation.org, and my YouTube channel is called Navajo Generating Station Remembered. So feel free to visit, stop by and leave a comment. It'd be great to hear from you. And we're going to be having more conversations coming up, more interviews, more pictures. I've got a lot of pictures to share with you. And some of them, just like this one, I'll be turning into videos and narrate them to, to kind of talk about what's going on in the photo at the time and what some of the things are. So y'all take care. And until next time, I'll see you.